Destination 100 million subscribers. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlene. I'm here with another video, and we're checking out All YouTubers Are Evil by Pewds. Um, and it's another Pew News, I believe, and these are like some of my favorite stuff to react to from PewDiePie now, because you know, Pew News! Beep, 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 beep. But, anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Remember to like, subscribe, and ding that bell button. I'm Gloria Bolga, and you're watching Boom News. <laughs> Uh, he only he said, you, remember, this is Gloria Varga, and you're watching Pew News, and he only did one Pew this time, which is kind of fun. It's funny because he's making fun of the normal format that, um, that news stations do it. It's kind of funny. drama this week and so much controversy and finally not anything about that stupid potty mouth foul youtuber sweet PewDiePie. <laughs> Please stop mixing me up. They always yeah they always use PewDiePie now they're just gonna be like well we can do everybody now. We can we can pull anybody from the platform. I don't even think it matters how big you are at this point. If you have anything that could be used as media clickbait the word YouTuber enough, even if you only have 10,000 subscribers. Like, that's why I am so on edge, because I'm like, oh my God, I have 26,000 subscribers. If someone could potentially pull some from some of my content and be like, oh, this is a bad person. Look with YouTube, look at these rising creators, what they're paying them to do, you know? Sad. Okay, I'm Gloria Borga, reputable news. Who <laughs> spelled it wrong? Gorlea Borga. <laughs> Our first news comes from Australia, from Pogo. You guys know Pogo? He makes these sort of music remixes on YouTube as Disney mashups type of stuff. Maybe you watch it, but let's give it a little taste. <laughs> here on Pew News, of course, I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm a big fan of Pogo's music. I think... Uh, I, like I like Pogo's stuff, like it's actually not that bad. Okay, Pogo's music! <laughs> I've listened to the, his album Weightless countless times, it's, it's so good. I love it so much. Two things that I know about Pogo that I never really process. Number one, his username is... I've noticed that if you go on Pogo's YouTube channel page, the URL that links to it is F-A-G-O-T-T-A-R-O-N. <laughs> Fagatron. <laughs> I've seen that before and I thought, wait, that's a bit strange. Is it because he made his channel in 2007? He was a lot younger back then and had a silly, childish sense of humor and never really bothered to change it, or is it because he actually hates gay people? Well, Pogo decided to answer that question. I came up with Fagatron because I've always had a very thorough dislike of homosexuals. To put this in context, he makes these live streams where he does random stuff, uh, like he explained, he to, to randomly meditating or not doing anything, uh, to dumbfound people. I'm guessing he thought it was so obvious that he's not a homophobe that he could make this sort of joke satiring homophobes. Because that's really what it is. Uh, he's, try he's, he's trying to do satire and it's too real. If you don't know Pogo, if you don't know uh, his type of humor and you see this sort of clip coming out of nowhere, obviously a lot of people think it's real and therefore it gets reported as such by The Verge, for example, saying Disney remix of Pogo can't walk back on his homophobic comments. There's so many articles. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, don't you just love the medium? Oh, Pogo is a, hom a homophobe. Oh my god. Shut up. Please. Just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I hate gay people. 
Someone's gonna take that out of context and go put it somewhere, right? That, that's where we're at. <laughs> and I think a lot of people know as well that it is satire, he was trying to make a joke, but it really doesn't matter at this point because if you get to that level, it's just going to keep going. I understand if people are upset about this kind of thing, but I think this comment I found uh, encapsulates the situation perfectly. Great joke, Pogo. I found it really funny how you said you hated a whole group of people for something they can't control. Have fun with your ruined career. It's basically saying, uh, I know you're joking, I don't care if you're joking, uh, enjoy having your career ruined. And it's so pity to me to just ignore the fact that if someone is joking or not. Even if it was a bad joke, or even if it didn't really uh, land with a lot of people. Just ignoring that completely, it seems dishonest and vicious, uh, which I guess is kind of hypocritical in a way to say, I don't know. The thing is, Pogo made an apology, and it's so bad, it is, this is, this ugh, Pogo, oh no, damn it. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, the controversy I have sparked, what have I, what have I done, my goodness, okay. I get it, he's not really apologizing, he's not backing down on his belief, and in a lot of ways I can respect that, but he also used to have in the description of this video explaining that he's, I don't know if you've had Asperger or some form of autism and that he struggled with empathy for people and I think he wanted to make this joke without realizing that yes, it could actually yeah, have negative impact on a lot of people. Because at least then I understand sort of how this situation occurred. I understand how, how he thinks and what he's trying to accomplish. Instead in this video he goes on a very anti-PC rant and I'm all for that but in the right time guys, in the right time. Don't go spouting about Peterson and all these right-wing politicians. I'm getting so tired of social politics. Like two weeks ago, I'm like, yeah, everyone is a hypocrite. Yeah, I'm so tired of social and identity politics. Uh, it's so stressful. It's so stressful. It makes me a little tired. Like, uh. And I feel, I feel him. I get it. There's so much hypocrisy in social politics. He's making fun of homophobes, but instead he gets labeled as one. Who's right and wrong? I don't know. I'm so lost. I'm just like, oh god. I don't know. I think it's a shame. He's clearly... Oh, he even said himself that he's, you know, struggled with his own sexuality. Not really saying too much, but you know. What do you guys think? Is he right or is he wrong? Another homophobe on YouTube. God damn it, there's so many of them. <laughs> Who's next? Mr. Beast? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What did he say? What foul thing did he say now, okay? can possibly be worse than Pogo. Windows is gay. <laughs> Media, if you're going to come after YouTubers, you have to really, really just pick something that is juicy, good. Like the same thing you did with PewDiePie with the whole you know, mentioning Nazis. You gotta get something as juicy as that because this picking and grabbing for clicks and views to stay relevant is this this not the way to do it. You're you're fucking yourself up. No one's gonna click on your article just because a guy said the windows are gay. Oh my gosh. I say your mom gay all the time. Doesn't mean your mom is actually gay. As a matter of fact, she had kids. That's impossible for her to be gay, right? Well, she could have turned gay later on, but you get the point. Like, it's a joke. It's not. It's not real. This is absolutely outrageous. <laughs> Thank you, The Atlantic, for digging deep in Mr. B's Twitter, exposing him for he true who he truly is. How dare he speak of Windows in such a negative light? Thank you, The Atlantic, for doing the work. Like, the the work. Windows are an inanimate object that doesn't. You, the Atlantic and the Wall Street Journal, these are supposed to be like huge publications. And you guys are just, you're, you're losing credibility every single second. ...of the people. I always had my doubt, but finally someone could uncover this truth. Now this article is a lot easier to just break down as trying to paint Mr. Beast in the worst light. Uh, the headline says, YouTube's biggest philanthropist has history of homophobic comments. I wouldn't really call Mr. Beast the philanthropist, no offense Mr. Beast. Uh, <laughs> it's like they're setting him up to knock him down. The Jesus of, of YouTube, the Jesus Christ of YouTube, is actually Satan, guys. 
<laughs> Listen to this. He said Windows is gay, guys. He can't do that. He can't just do that. What else did he say? I don't have a printer for that. Ah! Ah! The homophobia runs deep in the YouTube community. Okay. <laughs> 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 the YouTube community runs deep in homophobia. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever. That shit was so funny. <laughs> Cause the way PewDiePie said it, he was like, "Okay." It's very similar to uh, the oh, Bunny shit. Oh, boy. looking to paint someone in a negative light for the sake of clicks. And for the sake of uh, making YouTubers look bad, because obviously the media is going to benefit from that. You have this new platform uh, taking over for almost everything. You know, they're losing numbers, we're gaining numbers. So if they can make YouTubers look bad, and if they can generate clicks at the same time, obviously it's a win-win situation for them. Even if I hate using the word, but millennials call them out on it, it doesn't really matter. Why did you tell me you were homophobic when you donated 6,000 to me in my lesbian party two months ago? That's right, Mr. Beast, huh? The thing here that I find so ridiculous is the fact that Taylor, the person who uh, wrote this article, clearly dug deep into Mr. Beast's Twitter. Beast. Taylor looks like she just needs some clout. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking trash. What did you do, go to college for like, I don't know, you, you went to college for four years, got out, said, I'm a fucking journalist. Oh my God, got a job at The Atlantic, and now you're writing shitty articles on YouTubers. You probably don't even like YouTube. You probably had a friend that ended up being a YouTuber, made a whole bunch of money. You're like, ugh, it seems I've become a journalist. I'm gonna shut all of them down. Oh my God. <laughs> and there you go with your lucky break, but your dumb ass chose something so fucking stupid. Someone saying windows are gay? A printer? I don't have a printer fag? Like, so childish. Sort of comments were made years ago. But if you go on tw Taylor's uh, Twitter, uh, she created it in 2010. Despite, very curious. She said, she I write had... about tech, memes, social media, internet culture, influencers, and YouTube team. Delete your Twitter. <laughs> It's 500 tweets, or get 70 tweets, and the first tweet she ever made was in February, the February 1st, this year. Hmm, so what are you hiding, Taylor Lawrence? Why are you deleting your tweets? Anyone can play this game where you dig deep in someone's Twitter and find something that you can take out of context or, or take at face value and say, hey, we got you, you said this, you use this word. It's just so ridiculous. It's the same thing when, uh, a uh, Wall Street Journal article came out about me and one of the journalists that wrote the article made very similar jokes to what I had made uh, on his own Twitter. If you have more than a couple thousand subscribers, make sure you delete all your little tweets because uh, apparently it will blow back at you in the future. He <laughs> said more than a couple thousand subs. <laughs> for real. Because I got like 26,000. It's going to come back at your ass for real. Just go to that website and use the delete all tweets, you feel me, and just start tweeting, start over. Zoella and Alfie are getting called out by the BBC. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. <laughs> what could they possibly get called out for? They're like the most cookie cutter, family friendly, fucking dry YouTube channels on planet Earth. What on Earth could they be called out for? I don't get it. Her makeup is made, like, the only thing I could think of is, according to the media, because of how ridiculous they call out little things, is that maybe Zoella uh, was using makeup that they use to kill animals to make that makeup or something, and that she should use vegan makeup or something to do with merch, like Alfie may have, uh, didn't send out merch in a timely manner, and... Uh, people want their refund. Like, I'm trying to understand, like, what could it be caught out for, possibly? So dumb. <clears throat> BBC spends time writing this. YouTube stars might encourage kids to eat more calories. Oh. Are you serious? Wait. Dare Zoella Poet. 
Are you serious? With an ice cream. How dare she? This guy posted and Alfie are getting called out by the BBC. Wait, you're joking, right? So this is where we're at. In the current state of YouTube, we, like media publications, are calling out. That's like saying a celebrity like Drake, let's say Drake goes and drinks Sprite, okay? He, you know, he's done Sprite commercials. He drinks Sprite. Oh, they're encouraging kids to drink soda. Like, you can't get away with this bullshit anymore. See, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. <laughs> it's so dumb. BBC spends time writing this. YouTube stars might encourage kids to eat more calories. Oh no! Because Suella posted, Oh, how I will miss all of the amazing bakeries and ice cream shops when we get home. How dare Zoella pose with an ice cream? How dare she? Disgusting. Despicable. She deserves to get called down. I'm so not supposed to say my own opinion. Gloria Volga here, but... Okay, so what about all the fucking cooking channels? What about all those channels where you see people testing out fast food? What? What are they even... What is this? How could she? I'm trying to understand where they, I don't know why I put on my headphones. I'm just gonna keep them on, shut up. Walk me through this, because I don't get it. Okay, so they did a study in the, you, uh, you presented at the European Congress of Obesity, where they took social media stars like Zoella and Alfie Dates, and they took their followers on Instagram, and then they took 176 children, they split them into three groups, and shown pictures of Zoella eating healthy snacks, Zoella eating unhealthy snacks, or non-food products. Then they took the children's and offered a range of healthy and unhealthy snacks, between grapes and carrot sticks, chocolate buttons, and jelly sweets. And they found that the children who had seen Zoella eating unhealthy snacks consumed 448 calories, while the healthy snacks consumed 357 calories. Are you actually f Jesus Christ! I think I'm losing brain cells every time I hear about the media calling out YouTube. Like, you, is this where we're at? Is this seriously, I can't even, this is, I'm glad I stopped watching the news. I'm glad I stopped fucking watching the news. Like, this is outrageous. This is just out of there. This is outlandish. You're taking internet personalities and their pictures and sh showing kids images. Like, y'all doing research. Y'all need to be doing research on space and how we can colonize other planets. This is the dumb shit. This is dumb. This is dumb. What the f*** is this study? It's so dumb. <sighs> this can't be real. So you showed pictures. Okay, let's just remove Zoella out of the picture. So you showed pictures of a person eating healthy foods, and then you showed a picture of someone eating unhealthy foods. So that what you, what you got out of it was the fact that people that ate unhealthy foods consumed more calories. All you're doing here is proving that YouTubers has influence. So if someone poses with healthy foods, yes, you're going to be drawn to that product. If someone poses with unhealthy foods, yes, people are going to be drawn to that product because people look up to YouTubers. They're influencers. That's how it works. If she, if Joella wants to pose a picture with an ice cream, she has every. And the thing, and the thing is, like, even if it can cause people to eat more calories or less calories based on what they're promoting. That, that has nothing to really do with anything. Like, that comes down to a, someone making a choice. Children, just make your own, like children, I know it's sometimes hard, they're more impressionable and more gullible, but like, come on, come on, like. At the end of the day, if a child wants healthy foods, a child's gonna like healthy foods, if a child's gonna want, and for, for uh, and honestly, it's the, it's the parents' uh, 
fault. You know, it's the parents that have to just watch. Hey, if they ask for a certain thing, you need to tell your child, maybe you don't want them eating that or this and that. Like, this proves nothing. All of this is controllable. This is all... This doesn't even... This doesn't make sense because celebrities do 